Hello and good afternoon. Welcome to Home Park, where in an hour's time, Argyle take on Burton Albion. Good afternoon. It's Saturday afternoon once again, which means one thing, some more football here at Home Park. I'm Erin Black and between now and three o'clock, we're going to be building up for the action ahead of Argyle's game against Burton Albion. Uh, coming up between now and then, we will have team news. We're going to hear from Kieran Agard about his intentions at Home Park. And we're also going to see how a new Cornish development project is coming along as well as hearing from the manager, Ryan Lowe. All of that to come, but first we've got a couple of special guests for you here at Argyle TV today. A couple of members of the 1996 third division playoff winning team are here at Home Park and they are Martin Barlow and Paul Williams. How are you doing both? We're going to be sharing a microphone, Paul. <laughs> Martin's got one to himself. So uh, I'll start with you. How are you doing this afternoon? Um, I'm doing really well, thank you. And yourself, Martin, how's things um, for you? I'm really good, thank you. It's Lo great to be back. Lovely. Yeah, How do you come back regularly? How often do you get to visit Home Park? I don't come back too often because obviously I live in Manchester now, but um, obviously the place has certainly changed quite a lot since I last came down here and um, it's just nice to see that it's actually uh, buzzing again. And, and yourself, do you get to visit frequently or are you further afield too? No, I live in Plymouth, but I well, work hey. on Saturdays, unfortunately, <laughs> so I don't get a chance to actually come and see the games. So I had the, oh, sorry, I had <laughs> the um, right. chance to come today so and um, watch a game, which I'm excited about. OK, so let's talk about the, the playoff in question. A few years ago now, but very much to a cherished memory, particularly for you, Paul, I guess. Yeah, it was, um, it was one of those nights where uh, a lot of people even now even talk about it. Um, it was a great night and um, well, I was fortunate enough to get the winning goal. Yeah, I mean, you just stopped on the way in for a couple of autographs, I think, didn't you? Yeah, it's, um, it's ironic really because um, it's just after all this time, 25 years, and people still remember that day and they still ask me the same question. How did you get to that, Edda? I don't even know myself, but at the end of the day, I'm glad it went in. Yeah, so just talk me through the goal a little bit because I think some of the viewers will be able to watch it on the screen. Uh, talk me through that moment. Well, uh, basically, um, <clears throat> we, were, we were always confident we were going to win the game. So um, it came to the last five minutes and uh, Martin Barlow here um, is on the ball. He crossed it, but actually it actually took a deflection and um, I still managed to get to it and uh, put it in the back of the net. So I was well pleased on the night. So Martin, let, I mean, let's have your input on it then, because clearly involved. Uh, yeah, I was clearly involved, and I was only until last night that someone told me it was took the deflection. Um, when I saw it closely, it did, but I went past someone and put a cross in, and I can't believe Charlie actually came from left back and scored the goal. <laughs> so I just put it in the right place, and Charlie 
was on the end yeah. of it. So it's well, amazing. that's what it's all about, really, isn't it? Setting yeah, things up and yeah, making definitely. sure you're it was, in. It was just a great night. Yeah. Um, where would it where would it rank in in your respective careers? Kind of being involved in, uh, in something like for that. For me, probably the best night of my life. Yeah. Yeah, better than Wembley. You know, Wembley was special, but the game wasn't fantastic. But that evening at Home Park, I think it was just under 18,000. Yeah. And the crowd was amazing. And with the boss, Neil Warnock, getting sent off, just added to the actual yeah. crowd and all the atmosphere. It was brilliant. Yeah. And where, and where would you rank it as well in, in your career? Um, I, I rank it up there. Um, I had a few times playing at Wembley at different stages in my career. But... Um, one of that night was just unbelievable, and um, even now when I watch it, um, it's still um, his hair stands up at the back of my neck. So it was a really special occasion. Now, Martin, you mentioned Neil Warnock then a second ago. What was it like having him as manager? Um, he was just a good boss, man management. You know, we we talked about it last night, and um, we were not the best of players, but okay. we were the best team, and he got us all together as a group, and um, and that's why we're back together. Because yeah. we're as a group, and um, after five years or ten years not seeing each other, we're, we're just mates again. So yeah, it's special. And the and the team as well, of course. You know, a lot of names in that team that people will be familiar with and still talked about now. Like you said, do you still keep in contact with each other, Paul? Yeah, we still keep in contact. Um, obviously, on you know the social media sites and everything like that. But obviously, when we get a chance to actually come down, people come far and wide to actually you know see everybody. So it's great. I mean, you've obviously both come down today to, to be here for this match, so clearly still in touch. Well, he's just come from around the corner. Like, <laughs> I've come well, 300 yeah. miles away, you know what I mean? <laughs> Bit of a different slight, but anyway. <laughs> I'm actually just around the corner in Pembroke. <laughs> have you literally? Yeah. Have you walked? <laughs> no, I actually got a cab. <laughs> a little bit unfit now. Oh my gosh, brilliant. Um, so well, yeah, I mean, credit where credit's due for uh, for a big big travel down to yeah. from essentially one side of the country to the other, more or less. Um, what do you make of the Argyle team now? Because obviously, like you said, times have changed and we've got a completely different team and different management and everything. Is it is it nice to be kind of sitting back from the sidelines and watching a new era kind of take Argyle to, to new places? Yeah, well, to be perfectly honest, um, the club, this magnitude and size, um, hopefully I want it to get back in where it belongs to the championship. Hopefully one day they can actually get to the promised land, the Premier League and all the potentials there. Uh, I managed to speak to Rob and we played in a charity game a few months ago and I can understand what the philosophy is, what he's trying to bring and I, I think it's quite exciting. Yeah. How about yourself, Martin? Um, unfortunately, because I work Saturday, so I don't see the games, yeah. but I've got a lot of fans come into work and tell me about the games and um, I think Ryan Lowe's a good manager and I think he's going to do really well for the club. Yeah. You know, and um, with the chairman, he's putting a lot of money, so I think the club's going to progress. Do you think this side is capable of, of doing big things similar to, to what we saw with, with your um, side? I haven't seen much of the games, so I can't really say, but the results have said it all anyway. So I think if they keep winning and drawing away yeah. and, and just battling, you know, and I think, I, I think they'll get promoted this year. Yeah, I mean, I think we're up to 10 games unbeaten at this point, so that must be a pretty nice accolade to have it in the back pocket. Yeah, well, uh, to win, you know, to get there or thereabouts and win in the league, you've got to have a run like that. Um, and hopefully it will continue today. Um, but the potential's there, and I, I really do hope that, you know, they do make it to the championship. Yeah. yeah, of course. Now, just stepping away from current football for the moment, you mentioned working on Saturdays and you don't get to visit games. What are you, what are you both up to at this point? What, what do you do? Um, well, I'll just give uh, Rogers. Of Brixton, Plymouth, <laughs> Crano, car sales, yeah. and a uh, great company to work for. Um, so if anyone's looking to buy a car, <laughs> come to Rogers of Plymouth. All right, I'd love to see you. And you get a discount, actually, if you are a season ticket holder. It's the, no, it's the discount. eye contact with the camera as well. That I, I know. He, he knows exactly. what he's doing. He's a professional. <laughs> How about you, Paul? What are you up to these days? Um, I work for BOC um, Gas, so I've been working with them for like nearly 20 years now. So it, it's nice because I'm still out and about and um, it's quite weird really because everybody recognising you've got to sign my autographs all the time. So yeah, but it's interesting and I, I really do like it. So yeah. So when you mentioned the autographs again, what, what kind of stuff do people say to you when they see you maybe back in Plymouth on the, on the rare occasion and, and recognise you? 
just just nice to see you and then they go over about the you know the occasion and stuff like that so it's quite nice you know to relive them actual events what actually happened so you know and it, it, it's just nice to uh, be acknowledged for what you've actually did so it's, it's great and um, Martin, particularly now we know that you live only a stone's throw away at Peveril, I can't see any reason why you can't come back on the Tuesday night games and uh, <laughs> and come and do some more of your sales pitches to the camera. I'd love to, you know, but they don't give me a ticket. They not? <laughs> no. Oh, we'll have to sort that out. <laughs> My wage is not high enough now. <laughs> we'll, we'll have to have a word. So just to go back to your respective careers then, you have to forgive me because I was only about two at that time, so I wasn't actively <laughs> following our girl myself. But talk me through kind of your roles in the team and for maybe some of the younger fans that are watching it and just kind of how you helped to take our girl to the places that it went to when you were playing. It's, it was basically dedication you know when I was growing up all I used to do is see the wall there and just kick against it you know and I was be on my own just practice and practice then you actually get spotted yeah and it's just dedication at the end of the day and then when you get in it's just commitment basically and yeah. I think it's a lot harder nowadays because of discipline and everything. You yeah. know, we, we used to have a good time when we were playing football. Yeah. Oh, here comes Pilgrim Beat. I wonder who that was stroking I my thought hair. That was Mick not Jones a lot then. of people are brave enough to do that other than Pilgrim Beat. Is that <laughs> here he is. is that have you, have is you that missed Jones? him? Have you missed him, Paul? <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> I used to wrestle with him on the pitch. Did you? Yeah. Oh my gosh, back in the good old days. Uh, speaking of the good old days, then talk to me a little bit about Wembley as well. Then. Uh, when, well, the actual culture to game was the best. Yeah. Wembley was the atmosphere and actually um, the crowd. The game wasn't great, but we won one 0 Yeah. And um, but afterwards, it was the like celebrations was brilliant and all that, but. Everyone said, oh, you must have had a few drinks on the way home. We were just too tired, weren't we, Charlie? Yeah. yeah. We were just absolutely tired. So the Sunday was a good celebration. I mean, it must be, a, as a footballer, to just be able to play at Wembley full stop must be a pretty big accolade in, in the career. Yeah. Um, I, I was lucky enough to play there a few times, but that was extra special because, obviously, with the fan base, what we actually took down there. So um, it was just really, really delighted that we actually got results as well. So, so it, was, it was worth the while just going down there playing the game as, as Martin said it weren't the best game but as of the occasion itself it was something which you know kids can dream of to be perfectly honest do you think when you're playing in a stadium like that the actual content of the game itself matters as much because of course of where you are and the significance of the occasion I suppose it'd be the whole package if it was a kind of rip-roaring game but it, it must kind of balance itself out to be honest, the, the occasion, yeah, it's great, but at the end of the day, we're there, we're there to do a job, and that was to win the game, um, and we're fortunate enough to do that. So, as much as it's great, you know, going there, and it's great for the fans, you know, our main objective at the time was actually to win that game, and, and we, we managed to do that. So, yeah. Yeah, and, and it's kind of similar feeling for you, I guess, as well. Yeah, it was. It's just the actual day and everything, you know, your family going up and watching it, and um, yeah. seeing all the fans travelling up. It's just, it was an amazing day. Yeah. You know, so not amazing game, but amazing day. Well, hopefully you'll have another amazing day here in <laughs> here in Plymouth in Home well, I hope so. I've got to get a change to them. I'm, I'm sub, you? sub today. Oh, you're subbing? Oh, brilliant. <laughs> okay, so we expect Charlie, first half Charlie, sub? Charlie's in the squad, that's all. Yeah, squad. Oh, okay, yeah. All oh, right, so I'll, I'll keep my eyes peeled. Obviously, we'll make a big fanfare when you when you yeah. take it to the pitch. It's the star sub yeah. of the afternoon. Um, just before I let you go, because you're going to go off and enjoy the rest of the afternoon without being hassled by me, last question predictions for the game um having seen <laughs> none of the previous ones martin with you first what what are you thinking today um i'm quite lucky so i would say 3-1 today okay yeah, so we're that, continuing the the, yeah, of course of course yeah, yeah one, you know, one of the argo players said 2-1 button if you just said don't that his name. that was glates <laughs> that was glates all right <laughs> That microphone would have been off you if you'd come the other way. <laughs> what's that your was prediction going. for? Well, um, I've come down here because obviously I want the lads to win, so hopefully it'll be a 2-1. So that's what I'm hoping for. Yeah, lovely. Right, if you can depart in that direction, uh, you can obviously do a little lap around the pitch if you fancy it, because uh, get ready for your for your subbing moment before you get changed. But thank you very much both for joining me. Go sign some more autographs, and uh, I'll, I'm sure I'll catch up with you later in the afternoon. Thank. Where's the changing room? I don't know. I mean, you should know. <laughs>
<laughs> Thanks very much, both. Um, you can just pop that over there. Yeah, that's lovely. Right, um, we are, <laughs> what an exciting interview we're having this afternoon. You are watching Argyle TV, of course. I've just been joined by Paul Williams and Martin Barlow here this afternoon. So great to look back at some of those clips from Wembley and the time when those two were players. Um, right, back to here and the now then, and uh, have a little bit of a, a relax. We've got some team news for you coming up in a bit, but before we do that, let's have a look at last weekend's game against Lincoln City. That two-all away draw meant that it's now 10 unbeaten games for Argyle in Skybet League One. Let's hear from the manager now and how he's been preparing for today's game. The lads have been in yesterday, today and tomorrow. We give them a couple of days off. There was a group training on Tuesday, catch-up group, but rest that was needed. Um, we started on Burton yesterday, we'll continue today and, and finish it tomorrow. So we know what we're expecting from a Burton team. Uh, but it's one we're looking forward to. Uh, they don't allow you to get into their penalty box much. Uh, they get a lot of balls forward in different ways. Uh, and we're expecting a tough game. But what we've got to do is we've got to play our football and, and, and keep to our brand and keep to our style and you know, as we've been doing of late. And if we do that then you know, I'll be an happy manager. But first and foremost we have to pay Bert and Albion the respect. Uh, as we respect all, all the teams and all the managers and all the clubs because you know, as we've said all along, anyone can beat anyone in this league and Burton will be no different. Ten men behind the ball, right? The, the way me, me analysts do and, and we do and, and Shumi and Nance and all of us, you know, Darren, and, uh, on the opposition is, is we leave no stone unturned. So we, we know a lot and Bruno might tell us one or two secrets in terms of, but it's not about Jimmy or me, is it? It's about the team that goes out and plays and we know their style and we know where they're effective and we need to try and nullify that. We've said all along we want to make these fans happy and at the moment we're doing that. Uh, still a long way to go but if we keep picking up the points as we're doing then, then we'll be making them happy certainly. If we have James Wilson back, uh, he'll start training with us today, he's fine and then you know we've got a choice of who, who plays alongside Ryan. Uh, maybe one, one or two others maybe back fit in, in the fold but you know we'll have to wait and see on that. But in terms of yeah, look, that's why we have a squad don't we? You know, we, we cannot stop. Anyone going international duties and please for Brendan, he, he definitely deserves it. And Jeps is you know, pushing in the 21s and he's been doing well there. And you know, they go with our blessing. Uh, we just hope they come back injury free because that's always the, the worry in it. But no, we, 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 um, we're quite respectful of, of when they're called upon and to go and represent the nationals, national teams. And we'll continue to do that. But as you've said, it's, it's an opportunity for, for one or two others. 
So there will definitely be a couple of changes to the team sheet today. And to help me look through the team news, I am joined by guest Brian McGlinchey. Brian, how are you doing today? Yeah, very well, thank you. Lovely. It's going to be hard to follow the two before me, but <laughs> I'll try my best. Thank you very much. Now, former Argyle defender as well, just tell me a little bit about your time at Argyle. Well, um, I signed Paul Sturrocks for signing, so uh, I was part of the promotion team 2001. So yeah, we had an amazing time here. I've stayed down here, I'm married a Plymouth girl, so I'm stuck here. My son's <laughs> placed in the academy, so... Oh, brilliant. Yeah, so, yeah, I love it, really. And probably watching him play and coming to watch the games, doing this type of stuff, yeah. you get your buzz back again, you know, so yeah. Yeah, I'm sure I really kind of feel the atmosphere yeah, here, time, at, yeah. here at Home Park. Well, I'm just going to run through the team news for you today, which will be brought up on screen, and then we'll ask Brian what he thinks. So, Cooper, number one, in goal. We've got Gillespie, number three, Houghton, number four, Wilson, captain, number five, Scar, six, Broom, seven, Hardy, nine, Garrick 14, Grant 15, Agard 18, and Kamara at 28. So a few changes there in that lineup compared to previous matches, Brian. What do you make of it? Yeah, I think a few changes have been obviously forced due to international call-ups, which is, is actually a brilliant thing when you see your, your players getting called up for international call-ups. So obviously the forced changes, Agard coming in, I think that's good for him. He hasn't played in a couple of years, so massive opportunity for him. I think the managers talked about having a, a squad and you've got to utilise your squad throughout the season. So looking forward to seeing him play because I haven't seen much of him. And yeah. I don't think he's played in a couple of years, really. So, yeah, great opportunity for him. Um, great to see Mayer back on the bench, to be honest. Yes, yeah, yeah, I think he's a quality player. I think, he, I think he'd be a great sub coming on today because I think it'd be a tight game. Yeah, and then, then you've got, obviously, um, Wilson coming back from his, from, his, uh, from his injury, from his head injury. Obviously, uh, Galloway's away in international duty as well. So, yeah, and Grant back as well and left wing back. So... Yeah, a few changes, but I think the, the actual system will be very rigid with the same wing back, sort of three centre halves wing back formation. I think it'll be a tough game, and uh, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out because teams have come here and set their stall out and been quite defensive. Some yeah. teams have gone at Argyle. So it'll be good to see how Burton sort of actually uh, sort of approach the game, really. Yeah, and, and one of the players we've got on the bench for today is Joe Edwards, uh, who was the captain of Cork Club captain and played in last weekend's game against Lincoln City. Very poignant for him, in fact, because it was his 100th appearance for the Greens. Let's hear from him now. No, like, like I said, I signed a, a two-year deal to begin with. And you, you rarely, I don't think, you rarely get to, to 100 games in them two, two years, so um, we obviously had the season cut short um, in the first year, so you missed out on a few games, and, so you, ne you never really know and expect to get there necessarily, um, but like I said, it's, it's been fantastic here, I've had a great couple of years already, and uh, thankfully I've, I've, I've signed another couple of years here to, to be a part of this, this, this fantastic football club, so um, to get 100 games done mean, means the world to me, like I said. I hope there's a hundred more. Um, it's, it's somewhere I love playing. Like I said, you can see the smile on my face there in that last photo. It's, it's the happiest I've been playing football for a long time. So, family love it down here. Um, it's, it's somewhere where I want to stay and, and, and keep performing well, and, and hopefully the fans uh, appreciate that. And like I said, we were so close to, to getting a, another great away result. The boys did brilliant, and like I said, we created plenty of chances to, to definitely win the game. And um, like I said, it would have, would have topped off the day, especially. That, that's when you realise how sort of special this club is, and the following they have is, is fantastic. And um, I hope they can they can see that we're trying our best to, to, to give them something back on these away trips. And, um, we haven't done it in previous years, I believe, but I feel this year we're, we're doing really well. And um, I said with their, their support and um, the noise they make throughout the game, just it makes our jobs a lot easier. So we can only thank them for that. It's definitely a proud moment for myself and my family to, to play that many games for this this, this club. And I said I love, I love playing for the club. I love appearances the there for Joe and Edwards. The armband, so for me to get on the games is, is fantastic and something I look back on and cherish. Again, as I was saying, 100 appearances for Joe Edwards there. Um, that's pretty much, you know, a very good achievement, isn't it? Yeah, fantastic. Uh, 
I think he was Ryan Lowe's first signing, wasn't he, in 2019, and he's done brilliant. He's been an ever, ever present in the team. Yeah, really, he's a captain, and he, I think he was player of the year last year. And, and to be from that position as well, he was second joint top goal scorer last season. Yeah. So, you know, fantastic player, fantastic. You know, to be a captain, massive privilege. And you sort of hear a lot about him. He's a very family man, and his family are really settled down here. So, yeah, he, yeah brilliant achievement. Yeah, how important would you say he is to Argyle on the in you know in a variety of areas because not just as a player but as kind of being very involved in the community of Argyle too. Yeah, I think is you know it's a you know you don't realize how big this club is to actually get down here as a player. You know, it's a massive club, massive community, the the support as well, and you've got to be that as the club captain. And yeah, he's doing that really well, and his consistency of his performance on the pitch as well is, is, is brilliant, and he sort of leads by example. You know, and to play that wing wing back role is a, is a tough role. You know, you ask any professional, they'd probably say that's the hardest position to play because you're up and down. You've got to do both sides of the game. So, yeah, he's, he's he's fantastic, fantastic to watch, and probably good for young players as well. Trying to, you know, trying to get there. You know, that's the type of attitude and belief and and, and desire you need. And he he's got that in abundance. To be fair. Yeah, and you were talking about his uh, right wing back role there, which is something he's had to learn since being here. Yeah. Do you think that that kind of position suits him? I think it. I think it, it does. Yeah, I think you've got to have an, an amazing engine. You've got to have the capacity to get up and down the pitch for the whole ninety minutes, and that's that's tough. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, he's got all the attributes that you look at him. He's you know he's not the tallest, but he's got he's got good physique. He's very. You can tell he's very fit, and he's he's thirty, and you can tell he could go on now for years, really, because he's got that that you know he's, he has he has one serious injury. He's now he's showed two years of a long period of very sm minor injury, so it's long sustained period of playing. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I think he can. I think he's he shows all the right attributes to be a good wing back. Yeah, and 30 years old in his case, it you know doesn't really mean well, anything. I think these days players can play for ages. <laughs> no, not the, not for me anyway. But um, but yeah, for him, he's he's got years ahead of him. He signed a new contract in the summer, so hopefully more to come from him. Amazing. Thank you, Brian. Um, one of the most notable changes to the side this afternoon is that Kieran Agard gets his first start for the club. Uh, he spoke to Argyle TV earlier this week and he wants to uh, show the Argyle fans exactly what he can do. Always had the belief that I was a goal scorer, you know, from a young age. I used to go out watching the likes of Michael Owen, Ian Wright, and that's all I wanted to do, score goals. And um, given the opportunity that I did at Rotherham, it was only at a time before I was going to start scoring goals. What is that, what is it like though when you when you're in that run of form and you take to the pitch and you just think you you, you you must know you're going to score and it must just be an amazing feeling just thinking you're so yeah on no, top of your game. No, of course, yeah. You just obviously um, you go into every game knowing that you're going to get chances, especially playing with the pe people around you that could create the chances. It's just up to you to to know that your chance is going to come, and when it does come, be ready to, to play in the back of the net. And um, obviously in training, you practice all different kinds of finishes. So when it comes to the match day, especially when you're on good form, you know that the opportunities are going to come. So yeah, you're you're confident in taking them. I imagine Ryan Hardy's probably in a similar feeling oh, at yeah, the minute. Yeah, definitely. You know, I keep telling him keep keep it going, keep it going. You know, because obviously when you're on a which um, vein of form like that, you know, you just get yourself out there and you're going to be in the positions. And I don't know why it just comes. It just comes. You know, when you're in that sort of form. I hate kind of comparing players to players, but if you look at the likes of um, Luke Jeffcott and Ryan Hardy at the minute, they're two strikers that at this level are right at the top of their games. Mm -hmm. You know what? What is it like for you being in and around these guys? Because obviously you're a little bit older than them and you've kind of been there and done it. Are you seeing glimpses of what maybe you had in, oh, I in them? Oh, definitely, you know, um, as, I, as I first come in, I saw the quality, you know, in, in, um, in the strikers. And um, yeah, no, definitely, you know, there's there's plenty of goals in both of them. And as you say, they're in a rich form of fame. I've got a good good thing going on and um, I just keep encouraging them to keep them there. And I, I imagine you're probably learning a few tricks off them as well. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's always always room for improvement for me. So yeah, no, I'm just obviously here enjoying every minute, and yeah, I'm I'm enjoying being around them. <laughs> Let's just have a little look ahead at the game that's coming up against Burton this weekend. Um, we've, we've had a, a week off, which is a rare thing yeah. <laughs> recently. Well, not a week off, mm -hmm. but a week without a game. Saturday to Saturday. Off the back of the kind of first eleven games where we've done incredibly well, what's the what's the feeling like in the squad at the moment? Oh, just if full of confidence, you know, full of confidence. Um, and obviously, we we still doing doing what we're doing in training, you know, preparing in the right way, and uh, remaining at a level of focus. So, um, no, the camp is it's good in the camp. Because I, I I think it kind of says something about this squad and where we want to be. That at the end of the Lincoln game, everybody seemed really disappointed that we hadn't won the game. And the year before, they 
were runners up in the yeah, playoff yeah. final, so not yeah. a bad side. Yeah, no, of course. And as soon as I got here, I could see that you know the the team spirit, the everyone, the staff is all together, all in it together. And like you said, it was yeah, it was a, it's a disappointment. It's a, it was a disappointment because um, the team felt that it should have done, got a few more points, you know. But um, it happens in games, and it's just um, moving on up. Once that's done, draw a line under it and go to the next game. Just finish things off Saturday in front of. 11 and a bit thousand mm -hmm. fans at Burton. First goal for the club. <laughs> <laughs> Putting the pressure. <laughs> yeah, no, it would be nice, you know. Um, but more importantly, three points would be even better. So, so yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to, to go out there. Kieran Agard speaking to Argyle TV there. And we would love to hear from you as well on Argyle TV this afternoon. You can get in touch with us on social media. We are on Twitter at Only One Argyle. And you can also find us on Facebook as well. We will read out some of the best tweets we've had. You can let us know where you're watching from in the world. Maybe if you enjoyed the slightly chaotic interview from earlier on, I'd love to hear your feedback. So let us know and we'll come back to that at half time. We are now half an hour away from kickoff here at Home Park and we will have the Burton Albion team news for you in a moment. Plus, we'll find out about the brand new Football Development Centre in Cornwall. You are watching the pre-match show here at Home Park today for Argyle's game against Burton Albion. I'm Erin Black and I have Brian McGlinchey alongside me this afternoon who we'll be coming back to in a moment to run through the Burton Albion team news. Now, there's no Argyle women's game or under-18s fixture this weekend, but that doesn't mean that the work stops, of course. The club has set up the first of two elite coaching centres in Cornwall in conjunction with the Cornwall FA Director of Football, Neil Doosnip, and first team coach, Kevin Nanskeville. Uh, they both went down to Bodmin last week to lend a helping hand. Uh, I am having an absolute ball working with some of uh, the best young players in Cornwall, uh, which is uh, to launch our new partnership with the Cornwall FA, which is about many, many things, but in particular, uh, helping the coaches of Cornwall to improve. So we're showcasing things that we do at Argyle's Academy, and obviously as well, we're looking at the talent. We want the best talent in Cornwall to play for Argyle. We feel it's really, really important to help the coaches and the young players of Cornwall to have an opportunity and that opportunity needs to be with us, with Plymouth Argyle uh, and we hope if we can find the right talent it can be developed here in Cornwall initially and then on into Argyle's main academy then who knows maybe it's another Luke Jeffcott. The distance from some parts of Cornwall to Plymouth uh, is obviously quite large. Uh, we, we're asking some of our young players from the youngest ages to come four or five times a week that, that's just unrealistic for some families in Cornwall. So what we're trying to do is, is help bridge that gap by having our two centres in Cornwall, uh, which means they can come, get quality instruction, we can still see the talent, we can still get them through once or twice a week as opposed to five times where the families just go, no, we can't do that. So it's about opportunity and it's about helping bridge that gap. Hugely excited. Um, you can just see myself. I'm, I'm running with sweat. It's, it's been a great night. You can see all the boys uh, enjoying themselves, running around, playing football in their Argo shirts. Fantastic facility. Um, and we've launched the, the Cornwall project, which is what we set out to do. So uh, this centre, along with the Penrim one, is going to be massive for our football club and our academy, and also for the future of the boys down in Cornwall. I um, mean, I was an academy coach before I became involved with the first team, and. And I've loved always been involved with the academy in some pathway, uh, some area. 
Um, it, it's important because there's so many boys in the West Country that don't get an opportunity and, I, and I'm passionate about giving them an opportunity. Now whether they're good enough at the end of the day will be down to us as coaches and them themselves. But uh, yeah, my role is really to oversee and help the coaches all the way down through the age groups and to make sure that we're adhering to the philosophy um, and style of football that we want to play uh, at the Football Cup. We want to get more boys into the academy from Cornwall, rural areas all over Devon um, and ultimately we want more boys from the West Country in our Argo Fest team which we're all passionate about. Obviously we've had a, a close relationship with, with, with Plymouth Argyle, both the, the academy and the community trust for a long time. Obviously tonight is around the launch of the centres and opportunities for players and to progress to the highest level in football which is really important that kids across Cornwall have got opportunities but also for our coaches and our grassroots clubs it's, it's part of our giving back and making sure that again coaches and volunteers and clubs have got opportunities to, to work, with, work with players, work with the coaches and all that sort of stuff means that we can develop football across Cornwall. Well, I've seen a, a, a big culture change and I think having people like you said Neil and Nance and, and Lee Hodge down here is it's the pulling power you see how many people are here tonight it's brilliant to have that involvement and it's a real it's not a token gesture we're here because we want to improve the opportunities for players and coaches and volunteers in, in football across Cornwall. The night's going excellently, now the, the kids have bought into it, the weather's been kind and um, as you can see they're going through the, the, the core skills which is fantastic, which is going to be, sort of be embedded and be the sort of bedrock if you like of, of what we're going to be doing at the centres. Delighted, you know, we, we knew it would be good and um, we, we've obviously got a lot of local coaches in, hopefully they can they can take some stuff away as well because obviously if we're, if we're getting these messages to the players at the grassroots clubs as well, they come to us when we identify them, bring them into these centres, then, then we've got them sort of like knowing what these, these core skills are and that's key. Most of the parents are sort of dotted around on the outside and, that, and, they're, and they're thrilled that, you know, that A, sort of leading into it, that the, the people that are here tonight, Neil, Neil being down and Nance being down, they're really excited about that tonight and they can say, you know, just by speaking to one or two sort of like on the outside there, that they're, they're absolutely loving it and it, I think it's a signal of intent to the parents as well as the kids that we actually mean business with these, with these hubs and uh, we're going to be doing things the right way. Having spent time with, with Neil especially, um, I can't overemphasise how important these centres are to the football club. Um, it's something that's sort of been in planning for, for a little while now and, and to roll it out is, is, is huge and I it's, it's no surprise to me that, that Neil and Nance are here because I know how important it is to, to the football club and to those two individuals. So um, absolutely no surprise at all and I'm sure it won't be the last time we see her. It's a lot of work, um, I didn't expect it to be any different uh, and it's going to remain a lot of work to make sure we get the, play, the best players in, coach them right and so the, the Cornish players are at no disadvantage whatsoever because of where they live and I've, I've been crying out that for, for so long as a parent of two academy kids that went from seven right through to 15 themselves I know how massive it is to sort of uh, that, that commitment and how hard it is and sometimes they, they were at disadvantage the Cornish lads um, but that, that excuse isn't there anymore um, because, of, because of these two elite hubs that we brought in. And you can read all about the club's plans for its work in Cornwall on the website. That's pafc.co.uk. Now, let's turn our attention to Burton Albion and Jimmy Floyd's Hasselbank's side are four points behind Argyle in the table. He's actually stood just over uh, my shoulder here. Quite popular with the fans today as well. He's been having a couple of selfies, Brian, uh, manager yeah. of Burton. What do you think? Yeah, he's a football legend, to be honest. Uh, very approachable, which is good to see. Obviously, a great player for Chelsea from what I know from his playing days. Um, but yeah, he's done a really good job at Burton. His second time this has been here at, at Burton. Um, first time he did brilliant, he took him to the, the championship. And then he left for QPR, didn't go that well from there. But he's come back and he saved them from relegation last year. He did an unbelievable job. And uh, yeah, and they're, they look, they, they look, you know, obviously they're finding their feet. It's early days in the season for both teams here today. But yeah, he's, they're, they're not far behind Argyle and they, you know, they haven't really had the start of the season that Argyle have had, all the, the sort of noise has not been the same, but yeah, yeah. they're still in and around the, the league where they're, they're obviously going for promotion again. Yeah, looking looking very cool here, stood next to us at Argyle TV. Uh, so as Brian mentioned, not far behind Argyle in the table. They last played AFC Wimbledon in the league and in the Papa John's Trophy on Tuesday. Let's have a look at their highlights.
both Argyle and Burton on the pitch behind us at the moment. Brian, let's have a look through the Burton team today. We've got Jefferson on the bench and uh, Hemmings as well in the starting eleven. They both have two goals from their last three matches, don't they? Yeah, they, they're not big goal scorers. Burton and Albion, they've seems to change their formation, their sort of the front line a lot. They don't have the consistent partnership at all up front. So yeah, looking at their stats as well, you know they, you know, they, 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 I say they don't concede that many either. So it's going to be a tight game. Uh, I think Jebison, he's come from Sheffield United and uh, big thought, big sort of hopes for him, but he's not really kicked off really. Yeah. So yeah, it, you know they've got decent players up front, you know, and their their captain obviously got injured last week as well. So yeah, I think it'll be a tough game for Argyle, but I think if Argyle play their normal football. Um, I'm confident we an all goal win. Yeah, I mean, I'm reading here 10 goals from 11 matches, though, so maybe not quite as prolific as goal scoring yeah. as Argyle have been at the moment. Yeah, not prolific at all, but you know, you hope they don't gain their form here today. You hope it sort of goes to the next game type thing. So, yeah, but as I say, football's a strange game. You never know. It could be a high scoring game, it could totally contradict what I've said here, yeah. but. Um, yeah, it looked like it'll be a tight game. Or it looked on paper anyway. Yeah, yeah. Well, you've said on paper it looks like it's going to be quite close. Can I push you for a prediction or a, a rough guess as well, to whether we're going to see an Argyle win or a draw? Yeah, I, I'm convinced we will. I think it'll be a, maybe a two-nil victory. Okay. I think uh, I think I think the bench will play a part today. I think Mayor coming off the bench could be a significant because he could open up teams, especially in the last the last 20 minutes when teams are tired. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much, Brian, for joining Cheers. us. Brian McGlinchey, who is going to be joining Rob McNichol up in the commentary box now. So I will leave you to it so uh, you can go and get on with the rest of your afternoon. Just a reminder that you are, of course, watching Argyle TV. We are about 15 minutes away from kickoff right now. And uh, while Brian goes to join Rob, let's just run through some of the other games in the division this afternoon. Not too many this afternoon because um, many of the games have been put off due to international call-ups. But we do have Ipswich versus Shrewsbury, Sheffield Wednesday versus Bolton and Wickham against Gillingham. So we'll be looking at how, how those pan out at halftime and full time. OK, looks like we're almost ready to go. The players are coming off the pitch to get ready for the match. So just a quick reminder that if you are watching uh, this pre-match entertainment on YouTube or you're watching abroad, make sure you head over now to Argyle TV on pafc.co.uk because there you can watch the entire game. And for UK-based fans, you'll be able to listen on Argyle TV to the commentary provided by Rob and Brian. So that's it from me. I will see you at halftime. It is Argyle versus Burton Albion coming up next. <laughs> 